Well, that's the first lock of today done. Now I've got another four to get to Stone. And those guys that have just gone through the lock have got to get to Napton Junction for tomorrow night. It's taken us nearly two months to get from Napton Junction to here via the Ashby Canal. So we're just going to cruise a little bit more than we normally do. We're going to do about nine miles. We've been stuck in the same place at Shugborough there uh, for the last two days. Storm Hannah, which was a bit of a damp squid more than anything. High winds and lots of rain, so we just stayed put. I enjoyed the local scenery for a few walks. Uh, so yeah, onwards and upwards. So this junction coming up is new territory for us after this. Last year we turned left and headed to Wolverhampton. Now we're going heading straight towards Stoke-on-Trent and the Colden. So yeah, looking forward to it, as usual. <laughs> This is Shugborough Hall and it's the seat of the Earl of Lichfield, or used to be. It's now a National Trust property and currently it's maintained apparently by Staffordshire County Council. This bridge was built sometime in the 18th century to accommodate the Lord's carriages because the bridge further up wasn't wide enough and to walk 300 yards to the church was just too much for them. And while they were at it, they also demolished a local village because it ruined the view and rehoused a lot of the uh, poor sods in the next village at Little Haywood. So, uh, that's your aristocracy for you, Fran. Are you ready, Fran? For what? Jump on. <laughs> it's swinging. That's, look what it's tied to. That's not going to take my weight, is it? <laughs> Anyway, it is a pretty bridge. What you got, Fran? Got pansies. Oh. We've got um, a lot growing now. Salad leaves, herbs. We've got broad beans, French beans coming up, beetroot coming up. Oh. Uh, that's for me in a little pot. But we needed some prettiness as well. So, um, and I know this is plastic, but this is really good because I shall re-sow my salad seeds in that, ready for the next planting. Lovely. So, unfortunately, Storm Hannah is coming, <laughs> to, apparently, tomorrow. So I think we'll probably have to clear the roof tomorrow lunchtime, just in case. Yeah. There's a little hint of it coming. <laughs> yeah, look at that sky over there. So we, we've been looking at the weather all day, not knowing whether to move or stay put. It can be lovely and then suddenly it throws it down. Oh, let's stay put then. What do you think? Yeah, we might be here for a couple of days, but actually Little Haywood is a lovely village. We really like it here. And there is a farm shop, which we've not visited yet. So. Oh, is there? Yes, yeah, yeah. So they sell cakes? They might sell cakes. I might even make you a cake if you like. Promises, promises. Yeah. 
friend just stopped on the towpath to tell me that she wants this boat. Yep, very nice. We should have to wait till Christmas though. that friend? Oh, it's mustard, it's hot. It's lovely. We sowed these I think only about three weeks ago, maybe four. So we've got um, just ordinary lettuces here and this is a spicy mix. And we need to eat it now. We need yeah, to start ready. picking eating ready. rocket. Ready for a salad now aren't we? Like that. Mm, I don't know what that good, is, that one there. Oh, that's hot too. <laughs> nice. Spicy. So we need some tomatoes. Yep. We need to make a salad. Boiled egg. Yeah. We've got the chives as well. When the chive flowers are out, we'll be picking those because they're absolutely fantastic on a salad. And broad bean shoots. Can't you eat the broad bean shoots? Yeah, you can eat the tips. In a salad. Tips of the broad beans. They're really tasty. So... Obviously, where there's flowers, they're going to turn into beans. But these top shoots here, they're absolutely delicious. And they've got like a mild pea flavour. They're delicious. Anyway, we've been queuing up to get through the lock. It's really busy today. So I guess people are coming and going, getting back on a Sunday to where they should be. Lovely sounding boat, isn't it? Yeah. You can't get over the sound of those engines, can you? It's just no, it whatever doesn't. people say about maintaining them and being hard work, that is just such a fantastic sound, isn't it? It's lovely. It's a lovely yeah. boat, actually. Look at it. <laughs> Boiled egg and salad sandwich. I was lazy today and we didn't make bread, but um, fortunately, well, we did make bread, but we ate it all for breakfast, didn't we? Um, fortunately, by one of the locks, there was um, a little, well, it was a bit of a ramshackle farm shop, but they were selling home baked bread, fresh baked bread. So we bought a loaf, picked our own salad leaves, and that's before the end of April, which I think is not bad on an aero boat no, without. Bad greenhouses and propagators and all that stuff so we need to get another sewing made now yeah. keep a, a, a succession going that's right isn't it so that's olive and olive and sun-dried tomato bread with egg and uh, well spicy salad leaves lovely it's gorgeous oh, i'm gonna have mine now <laughs> here we are at stone boat building we're gonna pop into the chandlery look at this old truck they use for pump outs. Fantastic, look at that. lock is interesting. Uh, got a mini tunnel, it used to be for the horses and there's been many a horse rubbed against this here, the horses ropes and on this side as well it's got a 
rubbing strike on there. But yeah, this would have been for the horses to get through. Very unusual. She's in. Interesting on this railway bridge that they put these contraptions on the corners to prevent the ropes wearing away the stone corners. I guess they would have rotated as the horse rope went through. Not 100% sure. But I've not seen that before. So I've left herself in the lock. Set it, it's filling up. It's nearly done there by the looks of it. So we'll get back, open up, and then a few miles then to the next four locks, I think it is. And we're hoping to get to Stoke and Trent uh, by this afternoon, late afternoon. And then we'll be on the uh, Calder Canal the day after. Trent to flood. That's amazing. And there's the canal just the other side of that fence. In 1766 the first Wedgwood factory was started in Etruria. I think that was so called because of his association with Dr Erasmus Darwin. I am reading it out of a book, but there you are. Anyway, this was the new Wedgwood factory and it's been there ever since. It's still working and has a museum and a shop. Unfortunately at the moment we're in a bit of a hurry to get to Stoke-on-Trent because we have somebody to meet on a train. Your sister. My sister. But we will be coming back this way in a few weeks. So we're going to make a point of having a look, maybe taking the video in if they will allow us to. And maybe I can have a present. What do you think? What? Maybe what I can what? have a present. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like there a you are. self fulfilling prophecy if you ask me. are the what they called 
funnel kiln, no bottle kilns, bottle sorry, kilns, bottle yeah. kilns, which were the uh, remnants from the potteries kilns for firing the uh, ceramics and the clay. It's just like the, the guidebook said, it's, it may not be pretty, this canal, this section of the canal, but boy is it interesting, isn't it? It it's really amazing. is. If there's been nowhere to moor, so we might have to just go around the junction onto the Cauldron before we can stop, but we quite like the industrial aspects of the canals as well. And there's loads, there's loads of it that's just been left along here. Just remnants in the side of, of windows and wharfs. Jones and Shuffle Bottom Limited <laughs> Plumbers Merchants. Only up north could you get a, a name like Shuffle Bottom. Just been waved down by a guy in a high vis jacket, so whenever whenever anybody wears a high vis jacket, you always do what they say. Really deep love. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, I think it's the local unofficial lock keeper volunteer. I think he just likes to. Uh, Hang around locks. <laughs> Bit of a character. He's cranking those paddles up like a good one. I don't know how deep this lock is. It's just the beginning of the Stoke flight, which says it's 50 feet, I think, in all. 50 feet for the whole Stoke flight, so. Thumbs up. How deep is this lock? Twelve. The deepest one is at the top. Oh, is right. it? It's called the Beast. The Beast. Yes. Uh, this is the famous Rob the Lock. So you don't want to come and cook our dinner for us, do you I as well? <laughs> there he goes. Rob the Lock. Off um, to get our next lock ready for us, and apparently he's, he saw us from the train, shot down here on his bike like lightning because he wanted to help us through the locks, and he's going to do the whole. I think it's five locks of the Stoke flight. But what a great guy! Just loves the canals and loves helping people. He's told us, he's just told us, don't move, just stay in the back of your boat. He's going to do it all. He just loves it. You know? What a guy. What a treat, you know, this is what it, this life is all about. If you don't, like we could have moored safely down two miles ago, but we didn't want to. Because we're up here late in the afternoon, early evening, we would never have met him. And it's just characters like this that make the canals really special. Mind your head. It's a one-man lock machine. Look at him go. <laughs> Our man is still on it. That was a really low entry to that one. Nearly lost the top of me rosemary bush. No, it was really low, wasn't it? <laughs> this is I've, had, I've not had much. I've not had so much fun in ages. This guy is such a character. He does this uh, seven days a week, 
and gets on the train and goes and does what did he do today? Three times. Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton. Train flying. Rich described him as a human dynamo. We've done four locks in about 25 30 minutes. Is that? So, one more to go. One more to go, and the last one's called The Beast. <laughs> He's apparently an ex CRT volunteer who, uh, a bit disenchanted with the CRT system, and just is a what, what should we call him? A, a lone gun? <laughs> He is, <laughs> yeah. He just goes around opening locks for people. He's amazing. We have this would have taken us five locks. The way we go at it, it would have taken us an hour at least. And we've done these in half an hour, haven't we? So this is the beast, apparently, according to Rob. And uh, it's 15 foot something deep. It's quite a deep lock. So we're going to nudge all the way up to the top. Yeah, that wagtail on the wall there. That's why it's called the beast. It's a big one. So if we can do anything else, I think we need to go forward a bit more, hun. You're going to uh, crash. Here we go. Here we go. Fish. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Perhaps this is if he didn't open them so quick, it might happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the paddles are just getting flung open. So. <laughs> So we're ticking, just ticking over in forward at the moment, which is uh, interesting. The boat is just going up and down. So I think if it was us doing the luck, we'd have taken a bit more care. But oh, he's done. He's done the paddles halfway each side. There we go. Unbelievable. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Why it's dangerous? It's a record! <laughs> it was actually! It's the tightest turn I've ever done! Look at this! Oh my god! <laughs> I think I've taken it too soon. No, swing it right round now, I would. She says the expert of all things. you Mr Brindley again seems to get everywhere and this is beautiful we've just come straight onto the Calden from um, turning off in Stoke and suddenly it's beautiful nice mooring spot here we've got showers and all the facilities here so I think we're going to stop for the night beautiful well that was unbelievable <laughs> 25 minutes to do four locks wasn't five it? five locks man alive is a one-man whirlwind it's unbelievable and uh, anyway we tipped him royally because uh, we didn't want to do the locks anyway, 
we didn't want to have to come this far, but there was nowhere suitable to moor, nowhere we felt safe or happy. But this is okay, isn't it? It's, it's fine. Lovely. You know, it's lovely. It's, it feels like we found a little peaceful haven among all the industrial chaos. Yeah. Uh, wonderful entrance to a town and on a boat. Best I think we've ever done, isn't it? It's uh, <laughs> so interesting, so unusual. So we're here, we're on the Colden Canal and uh, looking forward to the next few weeks because we're just going to pootle along in our style like we did up the Ashby Canal and take our time over it because uh, we don't need to be any other way. So here we go. Up the chip shop. To the chip shop. <laughs> <laughs>